Thanks, sir. Appreciate you. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Is it fun? Showtime. Good afternoon. It is 4 o'clock on December 4th, 2023, and I officially open this this meeting of the Conway City Council. Thank you all for being here. We have um, Eric Roberts with us to lead us in an invocation in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Father God, we just uh, thank you for this wonderful day and for the opportunity to be here um, among all of us, Lord. And uh, Lord, I just pray over this meeting today um, that um, we just follow your will, um, Lord. And thank you for everyone that serves this community and this city um, with grateful hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. We'll now entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a motion? Mr. White. May, may I move that we approve the agenda? Ms. Helms. I second the motion. We have a properly seconded motion to approve the agenda. All in favor, please indicate by showing your hand. Motion carries unanimously. I did mean to mention that uh, Councilwoman Amanda Butler was not able to be here with us this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, now relative to the consent agenda, is there a motion? Mr. Bitt. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Jordan. Second. We have a properly second the motion to also uh, approve the consent agenda. All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, We're now at the point of uh, inviting people to speak under public input. This is an opportunity for anybody to speak to this council on just about any subject. The one exception being that that has to do with an individual employee. Of course, that would need to be taken up in a more private venue. Uh, you'll be limited to five minutes and their monitors so that you can pace yourself. Uh, I won't stop you in the middle of a sentence, but um, I'm gonna hold you pretty closely to that five minutes. And the final thing I need to say is that public input is not interactive. We won't talk back and forth uh, between us, but we are listening to your comments and uh, if, if it's appropriate, one of the staff members will give you the business card for the person that you probably most likely need to speak with. Is there anyone present today who wants to speak under public input? Mr. Goldfinch. Mayor, I move that we close public input at this time. Is there a second? Mr. White. Second. We have a properly seconded motion to close public input. All in favor, please indicate with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Item 6A is recognition of the 2023 artist of the City of Conway Christmas Card Contest. school in the fifth grade and just 10 years old. And here's a showing of the card. Let them know that you want to 
should have mentioned this when I was here, <laughs> playing yo-yo a bit. Presentation of the 2022 Quattlebaum Award for Outstanding New Construction of a Non-Residential Building. We uh, made some of these awards at our last meeting, but this particular awardee was not able to be here. So let's see about the Quattlebaum. Would Mark and Jennifer kiss the miss? I probably murdered them as well. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Is your developer here? Yes. And I'm uh, reacting to Well, we are very proud. Uh, we've got a, a, a showing on the screen of what existed. I, didn't, I don't remember that, that white building looking as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, um, the, the renovation clearly is, is a good statement of what an outstanding new construction of a non-residential building is. Congratulations. Item C is recognition of recent retirees. Mr. Emmerich and Ms. Smith. Until several years ago, we used to recognize our recent retirees at our city Christmas party, which was fantastic for us to be able to recognize them in that setting, but we really didn't have the public recognition of our retirees. So we started doing something different a few years ago. It actually stemmed out of COVID but we liked it so much that we thought we'd bring it back and, and continue to do that. So we recognize our retirees in a public meeting like this, and we present them with a small gift as, as they come back, um, depending on how long they spent with us. So I'm gonna call you each up individually. When you come up, uh, Lynn will recognize you um, with, with that gift. So first, um, Eldred Johnson. Eldred spent 26 years working part-time with the city of Conway. He was hired. He was hired in 1996 as a part-time business license inspector and retired in 2023 also as a part-time <laughs> business inspector. And we congratulate Eldred on his retirement. Thank you, Eldred. Next retiree was not able to be here with us tonight, but Judge Andy Hendrick was hired in 1987 as a part-time municipal judge and retired in 2023 as a part-time municipal judge, spending 35 years with the city of Conway, even though he's not able to be here, if we can give him a round of applause. For <laughs> One of the shortest tenured, but, but most impactful um, re retirees tonight is Mike Prosser. Mike, if you'll join us. Mike joined us in 2012 as a police officer, was promoted to senior master police officer in 2014, and retired in December of 2022 as a senior master police officer for 10 years at the city of Conway. Thank you, Mike, and great to see you. Mike Brazier, Mike, where are you at? There you are. 
Mike was hired in 2008 in the Public Utilities Department as a Trades Worker 1, was promoted in 2010 to a crew leader, and retired with the City of Conway in 2023 after um, moving to the Solid Waste Department as a Heavy Equipment Operator 2. He spent 15 years in the City of Conway and woke me up many mornings at 4 a.m. <laughs> it was one of the happiest waking up Thank you. Next up is Anthony Campania. Tony, spark plug was hired in 2006 as an automotive mechanic and retired last year as early this year as an automotive mechanic after 16 years of service with the city. Spark plug, congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> in 2005 in our public utilities department as a warehouse clerk in 2018 she was promoted to an office assistant two in the fleet maintenance department in 2019 was promoted to a support administrative support specialist one and she retired in, in april of this year as an administrative support specialist one after 17 years of service to the city of Conway. teresa congratulations on your retirement <laughs> There you are. There you are, right in front. Miss Pat just retired last week. She was hired in 2006 as a utility billing specialist, customer service representative, and retired for 17 years in the city of Conway just last week. We're going to miss you, Miss Pat. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sandra Skipper. There she is. Sandra was hired in 2006 as a utility billing specialist. She was promoted in 2006 to accounts payable clerk, and she hasn't technically retired yet, but she'll be retiring at the end of the year as an accounts payable clerk after 17 years of service. Sandra, we're going to miss you as well. Thank you for your service to the city of Calhoun. retiring that was not able to join us. Um, that's Belinda Mills in our police department. She retired after 20 years of service to the city of Conway. If we can give her a quick round of applause as well. Mark Bobbitt? Where's Mark? There you go. <laughs> Is he retiring too? Mark was hired in 2008 as a police officer, was promoted to a police corporal in 2012. He was promoted again to a police detective in 2015, reclassified to a crime scene investigator in 2022, and last, last December he retired as a crime scene investigator. We have brought him back as full-time master, senior, senior master police officer uh, as of this February. So Mark, Mark is both retired and working for the city of Conway. <laughs> Mark, congratulations on your not really retired. James Gibbons? James, there he is. James Gibbons was hired as a maintenance worker in 2000, promoted to equipment operator in 2001, equipment operator two in 2005, crew leader in 2006, was promoted to maintenance construction supervisor in 2019, and he retired in February as a maintenance construction supervisor after 22 years of service to the city of Conway. But we got him back as a part-time, as a trade part-time <laughs> as a trades worker in April this year. James, thank you so much for your service. We have three more. Jeremy Carter. Jeremy Carter grew a beard. 
1998, he was hired as a Firefighter 1. In 99, Firefighter 2 he was promoted to. In 2001, he was promoted to Firefighter 3. In 2001, he was promoted to Sergeant. In 2002, to Lieutenant. In 2004, promoted to Fire Captain, Fire Marshal. In 2013, promoted to Battalion Chief. 2015, to Assistant Fire Chief. And in 2023, he retired as a Fire Marshal. Jeremy, congratulations on retirement again. Love to see you back. <laughs> That was 25 years of service. Thank you, Jeremy. Wow. Also retiring after 25 years of service to the city in the fire department is Nate Nelson. Nate joined us in 1994 through 1997 as a in the public utilities department as a summer maintenance worker. In 1997, he was hired in the public utility department as a full-time utility worker. In 99, he transferred to the fire department as a firefighter one, was promoted in 2002, 2004, 2012, 2015, and he retired as a training coordinator and fire captain in 2022 after 25 years of service to the city. Nate, congratulations on your retirement. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our last retiree could not join us tonight. Uh, our last retiree is Rocco. Uh, we just learned late last week that Rocco has had some health issues. Lauren, are you here? Oh, no. Lauren, Lauren is, is Rocco's canine handler. Uh, Rocco is retiring after eight years of service to the city. Wow. In dog years, that's 56 years. Wow. So instead of giving him a uh, the normal tribute, we're giving him a giant bone and some Megan strips. <laughs> uh, pass on our congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Emmerich and Ms. Smith. It's a good thing so many of these people come back to work. We wouldn't have any employees. <laughs> Item D is presentation of Employee of the Month for December 2023 in well, public safety. I'm waiting Chief. for him to arrive. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the introduction for it. He knows that he's uh, in line uh -huh. for the award here, but. Uh, the award winner that we have for the Employee of the Month for Public Safety is uh, Nick Pavley. Nick serves as one of our school resource officers at Conway High School. Uh, it is a city within the city. Uh, imagine 1,500 kids, not counting uh, 100 and plus uh, administrators, teachers, support staff. Uh, come on back up here. Uh, so <laughs> that is kind of my acknowledgement to them is that they're getting prepared to take steps in their career. Uh, being a school resource officer is a fantastic place to begin because uh, you learn how to run your own city uh, because he is the, the sheriff, the chief, the boss, everything within the walls of that school there. Hold up. But to be I think he really is surprised. <laughs> selected as our employee of the month so that's the reason that you're here for the recognition of it and again as a, a school resource officer um, I, I just can't tell you the things that are happening inside of our schools these days the, the need of having a full-time police officer uh, inside and embedded within those schools every single day uh, there is uh, a series of many crises that uh, need his attention. Um, people don't get along. Uh, there's there's fights, there's squabbles, there's disputes. Uh, I can't tell you uh, probably a 55 gallon drum of vapes that he's already taken at the uh, oh, at the wow. desk this year. THC pens that come in. Just all kinds of things that are happening in all of our schools. Uh, his diligence uh, provides security and safety to the school there, uh, as well as assisting them with. Uh, events, football games, all of those things that if you go to any of these football games, you just take for granted that that safety measure just happens by accident. It goes to the hard work of our SROs that are working there. So uh, for all those things that he does for our kids, for our schools, for our students, he is our employee of the month and he gets eight hours of vacation as well as a certificate.
chief is also a great advantage that he gets to grow up with our future adults. Yes. Item E, presentation of longevity awards, November 2023. And I'll have Mr. Emmerich announce. In 2001, City Council created a program to recognize retire I'm sorry, retirees, recognize employees with the City of Conway on milestones with their tenure with the City in increments of five years. And we're excited to recognize three employees tonight. Mikhail Moody, are you here? There's Mikhail. Mikhail Moody is, was hired five years ago as a part-time athletic supervisor and was promoted to full-time recreation assistant in 2019. Mikhail, congratulations on five years at the City of Conway. Thank you, Mikhail. It's Josh Albrecht. Joshua Albrecht, there you are. There you are. Joshua Albrecht was hired in 2018 as a heavy equipment operator one, was promoted to heavy equipment operator two in 2020, promoted to crew leader in 2022, and was promoted to supervisor in 2023, celebrating five years with the city of Conway. Congratulations, Josh, on five years with the city. And maybe celebrating five years. Thank you, Josh. And last tonight is Jeff Jordan. Jeffrey Jordan was hired in 2008 as a police officer, was promoted in 2015 to police corporal, and was promoted again to police detective in 2021, celebrating 15 years of the city of Conway tonight. Congratulations, Jeff. Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Item seven, the second and final reading of ordinance ZA 2023-1204B to annex 20 and 7 tenths acres located at 3633 Highway 501 West, PIN 3260000024 and rezone from Horry County High Bulk Retail and Horry County Commercial Forest Agriculture to City of Conway Light Industrial. Ms. Hux. six buildings were done, so we would actually ask that this be deferred until all of the buildings have been Mr. Goldfinch. Mayor, I move that we defer uh, said ordinance. And I second Mr. Goldfinch's motion. All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much. Uh, first reading, item A. First reading, ordinance ZA 2023-23-1002-B to annex approximately 1,765 acres located on or near the intersection of Highway 701 South and Pitch Landing Road, Highway 701 South and Wild Air Circle, Highway 701 South and Kinlaw Lane, and Highway 701 South and Pitch Landing Road and Blaze Trail, PIN 3810000003. I think I'll start calling those zeros O's. 3810010004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 3810004009 
and with the approval of a plat between the gun store property and one of the properties that are included in the annexation request. Initially, the request included annexation and zoning of both a planned development on the larger parcel and highway commercial on the external smaller parcels. The request was revised to annex as a planned development for all of the parcels included in the request. Per the city's unified development ordinance, the intent of a planned development is to provide for large scale quality development projects of three acres or larger with mixed land uses which create a superior environment through unified development for the application of design ingenuity while protecting surrounding developments. They allow for flexibility in design to take the greatest advantage of natural land, trees, historical and other features accumulation of large areas of open space for recreation, preservation of natural amenities, and provision of community facilities, the creation of a variety of residential and compatible neighborhood arrangements that give the home occupant greater choice in selecting types of environment and living units, clustering of one residential type for better use of land and open space, and freedom for the developer to take a creative approach to the use of the land and relative related physical development, as well as utilizing innovative techniques to enhance the visual character of the city. This PD will contain a mixture of single family detached, single family attached or townhomes, and multifamily dwellings, as well as commercial out parcels. Per the master site plan that they provided, there are 1,380 single-family detached dwellings proposed, 1,018 single-family attached or townhome dwellings proposed, and 920 multifamily units. The total number of lots or units proposed is 3,318, which will be developed over an approximate 20 to 25-year period. However, the applicant is proposing a condition in the plan development that would allow the developer to shift densities between tracks with like uses, such as single-family detached to single-family detached, as long as the overall density is not exceeded. A majority of the property is zoned Horry County Commercial Forest Agriculture. Some of the smaller parcels are zoned Highway Commercial, Horry County, and Horry County Community Retail Services. RE2. Additionally, the property being outside the city's utility service area is not identified on the city's future land use map. The county's future land use map adopted with their current comprehensive plan in 2019 <coughs> identifies these properties as three different designations, scenic and conservation, rural and rural communities. I'd be happy to go into more detail, but the information and the specifics for each of those were provided to you. But if you have questions about those, um, when I'm done, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. The first public hearing on the request was scheduled for the May 4th Planning Commission meeting. However, the applicant had requested that their items be deferred to the July Planning Commission meeting. There was a general public input section and several people in the audience expressed concerns with the request which included the strain on city services, traffic, lack of infrastructure, cost of the development to the city, and certain uses in relation to the existing surrounding residents. Planning Commission deferred the request and in order to hold a workshop with the applicants to discuss the request in further detail. They held that workshop on May 17th. At the July 13th Planning Commission meeting, there was approximately 60 to 70 people in attendance that were opposed to the request. They too raised concern, concerns with existing and future traffic on Highway 701 South, the strain on emergency services, the lack of water and sewer facilities, the distance from residences adjacent to the subject property, destruction of forest land and animal habitats, lack of hospitals in the area, density, stormwater, and flooding, among other concerns. The request was again deferred at the July meeting and August Planning Commission meetings. At the September 7th Planning Commission meeting, Planning Commission ultimately recommended approval of annexing the property as a planned development with the condition that the PD include and or address all of staff's comments and recommendations. 
City Council held the second of the two required public hearings on the development agreement at the September 18th meeting. The requests were deferred in order to have a workshop on the request. The first workshop was held on October 16th and the second at the November and the second workshop at the November 20th meeting. For several months, the applicants and the city staff have worked diligently to ensure that to the extent possible, all of staff's and the community's concerns have been addressed. One of the biggest concerns of staff and the community is the current and anticipated traffic of Highway 701 South. Per the traffic study provided, there are five intersection improvements proposed. Signalization is also recommended when warranted at access number one and access three, with access being the main entrance into the project on Highway 701 South, and access three being the pitch landing road entrance. Additionally, the traffic study has recommended that dual left lanes be installed at pitch landing road and Highway 701 South. Other improvements at this intersection call for a southbound right turn lane, an additional northbound through lane, and an additional southbound through lane. The improvements at Highway 701 South and Pitch Landing Road intersection are expected to be warranted once 435 homes are occupied. The widening of Highway 701 South has also been a popular topic for discussion, and it was mentioned in the traffic study. However, it was not clear as to whether it should be required solely as a result of this development. It states specifically, the existing traffic on US 701, law, 701, along with projected traffic, may require widening of US 701 North of Pitch Landing Road in the future. Widening of US 701 South of Pitch Landing Road requires widening based on projected demand at the signal, but removal of the east leg of Pitch Landing may provide additional improvement for signal operation. With regard to the northern portion of US 701 and Pitch Landing Road, the traffic study states that existing and future ADTs would likely earmark this section as a candidate for widening. With regard to stormwater and flooding concerns, one of the concerns the staff raised at the beginning of the discussions with the applicant was the issue of structures or lots being located in flood zones. Staff was adamant that no residential lots or structures be within a designated flood zone. Can they be built within a flood zone? Yes, as long as the property meets the base flood elevation that is required. The city's flood damage and prevention ordinance requires that building areas be elevated two foot above the base flood elevation. However, riverine flooding resulting from hurricanes and other rain events have occurred that have occurred over the past several years have taught us valuable lessons, including the importance of conservation and perpetual preservation of environmentally sensitive areas. Therefore, the applicants went back to the drawing board and removed all single family lots and any structures from flood zones. There are still some areas of multifamily tracks that are within a flood zone, but no structures are shown to be within a flood zone. Additionally, with this project, the applicant proposes to convey 500 or more acres of property to the city, much of which is within a flood zone or contains wetlands. The property will contain master stormwater ponds, master open space, and a city park will be installed on that property. That will contain pickleball courts, a flood-proof playground, that is adequate in size to accommodate the number of children that would utilize the playground at project build out and associated site improvements. Most of all, conveyance of this property to the city will ensure the preservation of the sensitive areas in perpetuity. With regard to stormwater, the applicants have provided a master pond stormwater evaluation to address concerns that were presented at the October workshop the evaluation methodology used the Advanced Interconnected Channel and Pond Routing Program to analyze existing and proposed conditions as a result of the development and includes hydrologic and hydraulic data. In addition to this, the applicant has agreed to include language in their development agreement that requires stormwater to meet or exceed the city's stormwater ordinance that is in effect at the time of plan submittal. 
This will ensure that if more stringent stormwater requirements are adopted, even within the development agreement period, that all development will be compliant with the stormwater requirements that are in effect at the time in which development occurs and not just what is in effect at the time the development agreement is adopted. Staff also recognizes that there have been a lot of community concern with density. I would like to point out that in comparison to other developments in the surrounding area, this development is relatively similar in comparison with an overall gross density of 2.04 dwelling units per acre. This is because most of the density is being clustered in areas that do not contain wetlands or flood zones, thus preserving the rural character of the land and retaining more acreage for fields, trees, and other natural features undisturbed by allowing developers to bypass these natural features or obstacles that are on site. Cluster developments can reduce impervious areas by reducing land disturbance. Cluster developments, when used correctly, is a conservation design and considered low impact development. This is why staff promotes conservation subdivision development design when possible and requires that major developments over a certain acreage provide a site plan showing a conservation subdivision in the hopes that the incentives the city offers to develop as a conservation subdivision will entice developers to utilize the development design, which include density bonuses for low impact development practices, such as a cluster development. Warden Station is not a conservation subdivision, to be clear, but there are aspects of the development that incorporate key aspects of a conservation subdivision, including the preservation of the flood zone areas and wetlands, and wide perimeter buffers from external properties with increased buffers between some of the uses that are adjacent to external existing residences. <coughs> if developed under the current county zoning or if the property were annexed as R or R1, there would be no requirement to install perimeter buffers, no requirement to stay outside of the flood zones. No requirement to convey acres to the city for perpetual preservation of 500 plus acres of environmentally sensitive areas. And if developed in the county, the residential design standards that the city has in place today would not be applicable to this property. There is a list of outstanding staff comments that were also included in your packet, which do include concerns with the installation and timing of traffic. I'm sorry. Ms. Lutz, can you read what you just read one more time? And, and, and louder so that the, the cameras can pick it up because sure. it's critically important. Thank you. Time out. If the developed the list, under if current it, that's, county, yes, sure. ma'am. If the property were developed under the current county zoning or if the property were annexed as R or R1, there would be no requirement to install perimeter buffers, no requirement to stay outside of the flood zones. No requirement to convey acres to the city for the perpetual preservation of 500 plus acres of environmentally sensitive areas. And if developed in the county, the residential design standards that the city has in place today would not be applicable to this property. Um, the, there are comments that staff included in the packet. They do um, include concerns with the installation and timing of traffic improvements installation of the on-site improvements of the recreational acreage, the collection of sanitation and stormwater fees, as well as a connection on Kenlaw Lane to one of the tracks proposed to development. In closing, this property is outside the city's utility service area. When the service area was created or adopted, the city never foresaw the expansion of the city limits this far south of where the current city limits are which is why it stops at the gun store. However, there is also no written ordinance that prohibits application to request annexation into the city, only that which requires when annexation must be requested. Like the city's comprehensive plan, which includes the city's future land use map and identifies future phases or future uses on properties based on current use and property conditions, there is no crystal ball into the future, 
which is why there are avenues for amending future land use maps or the current zoning of property. It is also why comprehensive plans are updated every 10 years. Staff expects that the next comprehensive plan will look very different from the current and past plans due to growth that has occurred in the city over the last several years. Could the applicant develop the property in the county? The answer is yes. Would the effects of the development, if developed in the county, still be felt by adjacent property owners and city residents? Yes. Traffic will still be a concern, as well as overdevelopment, as will flooding, as will stormwater. At the end of the day, if developed under city regulations, staff feels that the more stringent requirements of the two jurisdictions would be implemented and a better development product will result. And for these reasons, staff recommends approval of the request. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have and the applicants are also present as well. Thank you, Ms. Hux. Are there comments or questions from the council? Mr. Benton. <clears throat> Thank you for that um, explanation, Deep. Um, first of all, I'd say this is a big decision for Conway. We all know that. Um, if we do approve to annex this property into the city, it's going to increase our population by some aspects 40 to 50 percent of what our population is now. I'd also like to compliment the development team and um, their engineers for the time they have put into this. It's very clear that they did not come unprepared and they've been very much willing to work with the city in a lot of aspects. They have, they've been willing to give and work and the product that they have on this piece of property um, engineered is as good as it possibly can get. For me personally, it is, comes down to two things. Um, is, and I, and I want to address one thing before I, I come to my decision is, 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 and Mr. Goldfinch said that, yes, and I do acknowledge this could be developed inside the county. It could. I feel like for myself, though, we have to take this annexation as it is in this land block and see whether it's good for the city. Because there are other large land blocks that are around the city that could do the very same thing, even if we decide to annex this piece of property or not. We have to make the best decision for Conway when it, when it, is, when it relates to us and whether we annex this in. Um, it comes down to me the fact that you're going to dump that many cars and residents onto a two-lane road. That is a big concern and we're not prepared to do that. We also need another river crossing to get over the Walcom Mall. If we had a four-lane road and we had some better infrastructure, we welcome the growth. We, we, we use the term around here a lot. I campaigned on it is public safety and smart growth. And to me, I just can't vote for it because we do not have the infrastructure in place to support it at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, Mr. I'll jump in. Um, thank you, Mayor. <coughs> um, there was a slide a few back. You made a, you made a point that the density is going to be uh, two dwellings per acre. And what we need to understand is, and, and first let me go back, and I've said this several times, and I've, I've beat this horse to death, but I'm going to beat it again. Um, I don't want this here. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't want the neighborhood that was built in the county further down 701 there, you know, but nobody complained about traffic when it was built, you know, nobody complained about the neighborhoods that were built off of Old Buck School Road down towards Buck, Bucksport. You know, the reality is, is they can go in, Land Bank right now can go in and do the exact same density, but what, I guess they can't. But what people need to understand is there will be no 500 acres given to the city. There will be no park. There will be no trail system. There'll be no plan. They'll sell it off in 50 and 100 acre chunks to Lennar and D.R. Horton, who will come in and put up inferior homes, okay? And you're still gonna have the traffic. And you talk about flooding. They could, you see that green, everybody see the green spot on the, on the that's, that's the acreage they're going to give us. They can build on that. They're agreeing to us that they're not. So, yeah, I'd love it if we never build another house, but we live in a growing community. 
And, you know, as far as infrastructure needs, when I was in high school, Carolina Forest, Bo I'm 42, Carolina Forest Boulevard was a dirt road. And today it's a four-lane highway. Okay, no governmental entity anywhere builds it before it comes. It comes and then it's built. That's just the way it is. Thank you, Mr. Goldfitch. Anyone else? Mr. White. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> My comment has to do with infrastructure as well as the roads. Um, sure, that's, that road has been a problem for years and years and years. Always ha has been going to Georgetown. So I think that that that's something that we as a council cannot do anything about the road. Um, we need to talk to our legislators and DOT and those that have that power to do those things um, so that that road can be widened. Um, this development could be a good thing. Um, I know there's gonna be a lot of trouble with getting on and off the highway as it is now, but we're hoping, as what William just said, that as you build um, the, city, the, the, the powers to be, if you would, we'll see the need and then try to help us um, develop that full lane highway down through Georgetown. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Again, on that, on that, good point, Mr. White. On that note, though, in this package, and I know we're going to talk about it later, they're proposing certain improvements. Okay, all right, they're in, they're proposing the group that's developing this is proposing certain improvements. Again, I can't drive this point home enough. That there is nothing that we can do, and I think that's what people think that we can just stop development, and we can't. And, and they can go in there and build out that entire 1,700 acres, and they don't have to do a thing to the road. They can do that right now. But the group that's proposing to develop this is saying, no, we want to come to the table with solutions. Is it everything that you want? Probably not. So it's the lesser of two evils. It's simple. Anyone else? Ms. Helms? So if we pass first reading, we still are going to have to talk about total enhancement fees. So that is a definite decision that the city council can make going forward. So we can still vote yes. And if we can't come to terms with um, enhancement fees from the developer, we can still say no. Is what I want everybody to understand. That's all. That's right. And as I've said before, um, the first reading is preliminary. It's more or less a statement of good faith. Uh, we anticipate working out the knots that remain and uh, move forward. we'll move forward based on uh, our accomplishment in that vein. Uh, I move then that we approve first reading of this ordinance. Is there a second? Mr. White. I'll second. All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Those against, your hand, please. The motion carries by majority. Thank you so much. Item B, first reading of ordinance ZA 2023-1002A for the city of Conway to enter into a development agreement with BRD Land and Investment LP for the development of property located on or near the intersection of Highway 701 South and Pitch Landing Road, known as the Warden Station Tract, containing, I'm sorry, containing approximately 1,765 acres, PINs. Must I repeat them, Madam Clerk, for the you record? You do not need to read them in the record. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yes, sir, Mr. Goldfinch. Mayor, I'm going to move that we defer this to uh, the executive session in a few minutes. Mr. Jordan. Mr. We have a properly seconded motion to defer item B until such time as we have further discussed it. All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Item C, first reading of ordinance ZA 2024-01028 annex 2300 acres of property located at 289 Wedding Lane, PIN 36713010025, and rezoned from Horry County Residential, including Mobile Homes District, to the city of Conway, low to medium density residential district. Ms. Hux. Yes, um, this request was submitted as a requirement to connect city and water utilities. The property was transferred into the applicant's name on October 16th. 
The property is within the Red Hill subdivision located between Highway 501 Business and Clarity Road. There's an existing single family residence on the property. Restrictive covenants are recorded on November 9th. Um, there are three other properties on Wedding Lane that have been annexed into the city limits, one in 2017 and one in 2020, and the most recent one was earlier this year. Um, city staff has sought annexation of parcels within this area in the past, um, and while this parcel was not identified, there are parcels along Clarity Road as well that were, and three other on Wedding Lane that were, of course, annexed over the last few years. Um, if it's the long term of council to annex um, properties in the Red Hill area, staff would recommend um, annexation of this property. Thank you, Ms. Hux. Mr. White. Yes, question first, please. <clears throat> is, I, I think I read somewhere that this was in an attempt to make all of this land area um, annexing into the city limits. Suppose some of those other properties don't want to annex, can we force annexation on them? You can definitely force annexation as a requirement to connect to city water and utility services. Usually if they have expressed their desire to not be annexed, we always do try to make that known and council can choose not to annex at that time and do so at a future date. But most of these properties also have a restrictive covenant, as I understand, that if, would require them to apply. If they do not, when they come in to get their account, they are required to record restrictive covenants at that time. Thank you, ma'am. And Go I'm ahead. not advocating making them come into the city limits either. Just a question. Anyone else? Is there a motion? I move that we uh, bring this property into the city of Conway um, under the and under the um, I just lost a word and it, it won't come back but that we bring it into the city thank you <laughs> mr. Goldfish I'm sorry okay. who did I second all right thank you we have a properly seconded motion to approve first reading of this ordinance are there questions or comments there being none I'll call a vote all in favor please indicate so with the showing of your hand motion carries unanimously thank you Ms. Hux item nine for consideration a consideration Consideration of selection of a firm to design and engineer phase one development of the Chestnut Bay Resilience Project. Ms. Hyman. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, recently, as you all know, the city received funding for Chestnut Bay from South Carolina, South Carolina Emergency Management Division as part of the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Grant. Uh, it was awarded in two phases, and the first phase is the design and engineering of the project. And so we recently uh, publicly advertised to select an engineering firm to work on this phase one develop development. We received proposal proposals on November 16th. Uh, we received two, and staff scored those and has chosen Robinson Design Engineers to complete the work. And if City Council uh, approves the hiring of this firm, we would enter into negotiations uh, and a contract with them immediately. Wonderful. I'm happy to answer any questions. I have one question. Um, was cost one of the factors that you measured at all? No, no because it's it an engineering firm, it has to be done as a request for qualifications rather okay. than proposal. Wonderful. Anyone else? Mr. Benton, please. Mayor, I'll make a motion we approve. Thank Second. you. Mr. White. Second. We have a properly seconded motion to approve this firm for the um, engineering phase of development of Chestnut Bay Resilience Project. All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, item B is consideration of a proposed four-way stop on 6th Avenue at Hill Street intersection. Chief Long. Uh, good evening. A couple of meetings ago, uh, was asked to take a look at the intersection of Ridge Street and 6th Avenue. Uh, we did collect some data there, and we're seeing uh, not really a speeding issue through the problem is the problem, but there are uh, about a thousand or better car trips per day uh, through that very uh, tight residential area. Uh, and based on that sheer number there, uh, I do believe that it would be prudent for us to add a four-way stop sign 
So I'm here to ask uh, for your permission to put that stop sign there. Thank you, Chief. I'll, I'll move that we um, put these stop signs in place. I think it's a low cost remedy before the accident happens yep. and someone gets hurt. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. <clears throat> Properly seconded motion to approve a four way stop at that intersection. Any comments or concerns? Yes, I've been beat up about that for the last 10 years. <laughs> And I'm glad he asked me once. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad I just used that 10 as a. That's all it took. He came out of it. Okay. But I thank you very much. Sure. For call the of residents will as well. Absolutely. All in favor, please indicate so with a showing of your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we're now at the City Administrator's Report. Good afternoon. The, um, thank you. The Christmas tree lighting had fantastic attendance and was well received um, by everyone. It's been growing every year. This was no, no exception. Um, clearly, we had a lot of complaints related to traffic. Next year, I have some good news. Um, if all goes according to plan, we'll have the permanent Christmas tree location at the Town Green and the newly redesigned Town Green location. And hopefully, that will go uh, much more smoothly. Um, the Whittemore Task Force meets Wednesday at 5 p.m. There was some difficulty in establishing a quorum at the last meeting. The task force has asked to make their own agendas. We have not had anything provided yet by this, for this Wednesday meeting, so to be legally compliant, we've gone ahead and prepared an agenda for this meeting, and we'll work with them going forward on, on whether they can get their own um, prepared. The hospitality fee numbers are in from October. Um, I got them this morning, so uh, it is a, a, a gauge of the success of the Halloween activities that we do. Uh, last year, if you remember, collections for the month, year over year, were up citywide by 6%, and for just the downtown area by about 18%. That was last year. So that was 2022 over 2021. 2023 numbers over 2022 numbers. Citywide, we're up 9.4% 9, 9 citywide, and for the downtown restaurants, 21% an increase over last year. So. And I realize there's some math with this, but cumulatively, that's an almost 40% increase for the downtown restaurants year over the two-year period we've been doing Halloween. Um, tomorrow night is the city staff Christmas party at the Sports and Fitness Center at 6 p.m. Um, make sure you come hungry and ready for some Christmas bingo. Um, we had a great time last year, and hopefully we can recreate that magic this year. Um, Wednesday at 6 p.m. is the Under the Lights 5K, which starts at the marina. Even if you're not a runner, coming to watch that event, it's a fun event. Um, it's a fun to be a spectator. I hate running, but I've gone every year. We've done it. It's really fun to watch. Um, so come and watch that. I think they've got 350 participants already signed up, which is a, a huge amount. Um, Thursday night is one of the big Rivertown Christmas nights. And adding to that, we're adding a new event. I think I've probably reached out to some of you about this. Uh, it is a sensory friendly Christmas tree um, lighting event. At 5.30, we're gonna light the tree at Riverfront Park. And I realize it's already been lit, but we're gonna have a celebration and, and relight the tree. Uh, there will be music and it'll be an atmosphere that is welcoming to all of our residents. Um, we, we realize that we have a large population of both children and adults that have autism or other neurological um, issues. And we have unintentionally excluded them from events like our Christmas tree lighting. And we hope to be able to fix that going forward and start that by fixing it this year. So this will be an event where if you have a family member or if you know of, of a member of the community that has someone with autism in their family, um, this is a, a place that is a safe place. So if your child or uh, adult child wants to, um, needs to have the release that they need to have as part of that, that, um, that, those issues, this would be the place to do it. So we're looking forward to having this event and hopefully it'll be a great first year for it. Um, the Christmas parade, the annual Christmas parade is this Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, as you know, they're all, we always ride in the parade. We have the train, it will be at the start of, near the start of the parade route, which is at Main and 16th. So if y'all can be there at 9.45 at the latest to give me some stress relief that I know you're all there, get you on the train and, um, and we'll get you going on the parade. So appreciate that. Before the parade, if you're hungry for breakfast, join us at the Sports and Fitness Center for Pancakes with Santa. That runs from 7 to 9 a.m. Um, this Friday and Saturday night at the Terrace, we're showing movies. Christmas Vacation on Friday and Die Hard on Saturday. It is a Christmas movie. Um, keep in mind that Die Hard is R-rated, so parental supervision is suggested. And on the 15th, we will show The Grinch, the new version of The Grinch with Benedict Cumberbatch. 
Um, a couple of non-Christmas related, it's been full Christmas mode, I don't know if you can tell, uh, and we still have a couple of busy weeks ahead of us. Non-Christmas related reports, the lights for the pickleball courts at Collins Park should go up late this week or early next week. They have a very steady usage. Um, there's always somebody on them during the day and, and we're, we're obviously very pleased about that. Last year, um, the, the mayhem that went on on Laurel Street with construction and all that, um, there were some street lights damaged. The, the electric line got cut to some of the street lights. They're finally, Sandy Cooper is finally able to get those fixed. They hope to be able to fix them on Monday mm -hmm. and have all the repairs to the street made before the Thursday festivities kick off again. So a yeah, short term around, but it should, be, it should be a pretty easy fix. On the 13th of December at 11 a.m., we're holding a ribbon cutting with Santee Cooper for the new EV charging stations, which are right across the street behind me uh, in the parking lot with the mural, and that will be at 11 a.m. Uh, Grant-funded EV chargers, and it's a, a great cooperation and partnership with Santee Cooper. Um, we just learned something very late today in the Santee Cooper realm. The Santee Cooper Board of Directors met today and approved the transfer of the Ashbon property, Lake Busby, and the former steam plant site to the city of Conway. There, there are still some hurdles to overcome. The transfer is conditioned on the Joint Bond Review Committee of the State Legislature approving it. They meet in January. Um, I, I don't think anything's a formality, but we really hope that they're on board and we've had some good feedback on it. Uh, this will be an amazing project for the city of Conway and will be a game changer going forward. So we're really excited about it. And I think from the feedback I got from Sandy Cooper, they're as excited as we are for it. So uh, looking forward to big things to come. We do have some department head reports tonight. Uh, if there's any questions for me, I'll take them now. Otherwise, I'll turn it over. Yes. When we're working on these lights on Laurel, we're we going to put the uh, two-hour parking signs back up. Yeah, they'll go up. Yeah, there. we have is, them. Is that is that in park a, a handicap park? On the one closest to the intersection. Yes. Yes, it is. And we'll we're going to repaint that with blue. I think it's not the whole. When we redid it, part of the curbing came out, so the blue is not the full length. So we will re-blue stripe that and put the handicap symbol on it as well. The two-hour parking signs we will put back up as well as the lights. Perfect. Thank you. I know we don't have anything to do with the parade, but do we know why they changed the route? Um, there were a couple reasons. Um, one is it was very difficult for some of the larger floats to make the turns. They're almost hairpin turns when you make a bunch of rights. So coming down to 3rd Avenue, making the turn, then going right back up and making a turn, and then making a left turn was very difficult. It also created very large gaps for the walkers. So you would have uh, a very congested area, then a big break and a congested area, and it delayed the length of the parade. So. I think one year we had like a three hour long parade and a lot of that was because of an extra hairpin turn. By leaving it open, it will also allow us to keep the bridge open to be able to allow traffic to turn onto 3rd Avenue, which we hope will help with some of the traffic as well. All right, thank you. Just to add to that, because I was in the meeting where it was discussed, um, we had some, some of the, and I don't want to name them by name, but you could probably, probably guess, some of the bigger trucks that are in the parade, it's gotten to the point where they were, they were ready to pull out. Um, because you got children and it just you take third avenue and you got children on the side and it just makes that that, that much smaller and so you, you were going to have some some folks that had have participated forever um, but those trucks keep getting bigger the floats getting bigger and i know some people aren't happy about it i mean if you got a business there and you've sat at your business for 50 years and watched the parade go by, but that's that's the reason why. The crowds have also been getting bigger and getting tighter and tighter on the route. I know Chief Long has been very concerned about trying to mitigate that by using some barricades, um, but as you get to the congested corners that are congested just by the, the confines of the street, putting those barricades on makes it even more congested. So I think this was one way to make it safer and, and make the parade a little shorter in duration as well. At some point, it's going to be difficult to get everybody within viewing space. Uh, I understand the safety issue that exists now, but um, I'm terribly crowded from 16th Avenue through the whole route of the of the um, parade. So um, maybe there can be some other kind of extension over time so that people can spread out a bit more. I think I think we're all having some success issues. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? All right, um, we have department heads, from department heads from Finance, Planning, and Construction Services. The reporting night actually is not department head from Finance. Where's Merritt? Merritt, I have you up first. Merritt is going to report on a new program in the Finance Department. Yes. Good evening.
evening. Good evening. So the last couple of years, we have done um, an angel tree for the water department, and the proceeds to that did go to our customers in need, so it did stay within our area. Um, we have seen a little bit of a decline with that program, and we would like to start a new program. It would be Conway H2O, and provided this goes well for the Christmas season, it might be something that we would like to continue throughout um, the year. So what we would do is we would have a roundup program where customers come to pay their bill, they can round it up to the nearest dollar. When they round it up to the nearest dollar, that additional amount would go into a donation fund. That would be how people would be able to donate. If they did want to donate a lump sum, they're free to. However, we do feel like it's going to make it more affordable for those who want to contribute that might not feel like 99 cents would be enough contribution, this way it is. Um, while leaving it open to other lump sum donations. Now, as far as the recipients, we are asking that our customers that do need aid, that they apply for the service. Um, with this pilot of the Christmas season, we are just asking that we get their name, their account number, um, and that they haven't had assistance in the last six months because we do have a lot of um, entities like Welcome White DOC, Salvation Army, uh, CAPS, all helping with water bills. So we want to make sure that we are assisting customers that have not already received other assistance. Do y'all have any questions for me? It's a great yes. idea. What okay. if they have it automatically drafted? Do you, uh, like, would, how would they round up? So since this is a pilot trial program, we would ask that they call in. However, if this is something that we do extend, long term, then those are things that we would have to figure out from there. But at this point, we just ask that if you are um, auto pay on our uh, website or if you do bank draft, we would ask for you to call in and contribute. And we don't normally take payments over the phone through our office. There is a fee if you use our automated system. However, for this reason, we obviously would not direct those customers to make payments that way. We would take that in our office. Just as you would accept a lump sum, would you accept rounding up to the next five? Absolutely, yes. Okay. It's just or the bare next minimum, 10. round up to the nearest dollar. So that way, if you don't feel like there's anything you can contribute, but in you know, for the season of giving, you want to give 99 cents most of us can give. Anyone else? Any other questions? We hope it's a success. I surely hope so. We'll let you know how it goes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You might want to give her a second little break. <laughs> We've got some wiring issues. <laughs> Hall renovations and we did some renovations at court finance department Santa's Village uh, replaced some boards on the Riverwalk and Hilton Scarborough Alley uh, code enforcement has issued approximately 300 more building permits this year than the same period last year we did see a decrease in single-family dwellings earlier this year but we think it was because of the build outs of the developments because I think we had maybe seven developments open up in 2023 and the numbers of single family dwellings have started to come back up. So. so Mr. Cooper, I have to say, you mentioned those things as if they were like little nothings. Um, <laughs> things like the, the renovation in Scarborough Alley and, and all that you do. But I want everybody to know that these are huge projects and they make a big difference for uh, city employees and, and, and the public as well. Thank, Thank you. you for all you do. Have good help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we are now at the point. There, there we go. One more. I'm so sorry. I wouldn't have done that for anything, Ms. Hux. Yes. Yeah, so 2023 has been a very busy but um, a very productive year for planning and development. We did recently fill the position of the zoning and landscaping inspector, which is a new position created uh, this year. This person will handle most of the zoning enforcement and will also assist the city arborist with tree pruning, um, tree removal permits, as, well as, as far as, um, and also landscaping inspect inspections. 
for letters of credit reduction and releases. Um, just some numbers that I have, uh, we've had 12 text amendments this year. We have 11 more currently in progress. Um, there have been over 70 annexation applications submitted or rezoning um, so far in 2023. As far as plan reviews go, including minor plats, major developments, residential and commercial projects, and resubmittals, we've had over 300 submittals, plan review submittals so far in 2023. Planning Commission has considered 91 items. Over 1,000 illegal signs have been removed. GIS has created close to 2,500 maps, collected or calculated stormwater fees for 82 new businesses, um, assigned 536 new address points, um, have had almost 2,200 new updated or upgraded water meters, and have uh, updated GIS to reflect restrictive covenants for an additional 336 properties. Um, one of the issues that, or one of the big ticket items that we've had or that we try to keep track of every so often, we update a Conway growth map. Right now, in review, we have 9,413 residential units in review, um, which could change significantly depending on market conditions um, and whether or not many of those projects continue with the review projects, but right now, that's what we have. How many people are on staff in your department? Nine. Whew. Yeah. Yes, Have your hands. But spot. only five that are dedicated to planning yes. and zoning. Five or six. Yes. yes. Got big jobs. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to move, Mr. Emmerich? Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> we'll uh, now entertain council input, and we'll start with Mr. Benton. <clears throat> Um, I think this is my official last meeting, although I served through the end of the month. <clears throat> I would just like to say uh, thank you to my fellow council and mayor for being so kind and helping me along the way as a rookie up here. And um, I'd like to say thank you to our staff. Um, I tell you, the one thing that I take away from this experience and the opportunity to serve is just how amazing our staff is from anybody, everyone is so professional in any position they, they do. And um, I should encourage anyone, if you see someone picking up your trash, keeping you safe, um, administration, I mean, just say thank you. Um, that's the one that, that's the people that make the city run and I'm amazed by them. Um, I'd also like to say that everyone sitting up here, I've gotten to know them better. And although we might not always agree, disagree sometimes, everyone up here sits, sitting up here does love Conway immensely, as I do. And I will always be available to y'all to help. And thank you for the opportunity for the citizens to serve. And this will always be a highlight of my life. And I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Ms. Helms. Um, I just want to say that um, this is a pretty big seat to fill. I mean, we get blamed for everything and we try to do our best to do what we think is best interest of everybody. Um, it is Christmas. Conway's putting on great shows, but every month is great in Conway, it seems to be. Thanks to all our staff. Um, Jessica's very professional. She's been working diligently for this warden station, whether we pass it or not, I think that staff has really gone way beyond what they probably have ever been asked or paid to do. Um, good luck to Mr. Benton. I know he's got a lot of big plans and Merry Christmas and I appreciate everybody's prayers for my family and I pray for y'all to have a great Christmas too. Thank you, Ms. Helms. Mr. White. Uh, so ditto and good luck to you as well, sir. Um, Thank you for all of us for just being where we are. Uh, and to the citizens of Conway, thank you also for my re-election. Uh, I will try to do my best to make you satisfied with the, the, with the decisions that we make here. And as, as we said, these are some hard seats sometimes. Uh, so we thank you for that. Um, street lights on 6th Avenue, the dead end part, um, I think they have maybe one street light on that whole street and that's 
probably at the end of the street. So if we can um, check on that for me, please. Uh, and I was just told that they had um, street, uh, Christmas lights at Smith Jones also. So if you would drive through there and see what they look like. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Black, Mr. Goldfinch. And Merry Christmas. I'm sorry. I mean to rush it. Let's go. Mr. Goldfinch. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Benton, um, but most folks, they, you know, until you've held a, an elected position and, and, and taken criticism, um, in often cases uh, from those most close to you, people you go to church with, people you work with, um, not to mention those that you don't know. Um, you, you can't fully appreciate what it is to, to throw your name and your family um, into, into something. So, so I appreciate and applaud your effort and um, wish you and your family the best. Um, when I got on council <clears throat> some years ago, we had a, we had a good group and um, we sort of flew under the radar we were safe, we didn't take risk, and then we hired this gentleman <clears throat> sitting on the front row, row who thinks outside the box in a way that really no one else ever had. And, you know, with that comes trouble sometimes. And, and I just, and I'm, you know, I, I came to one of, I think, the greatest events we do um, Thursday night and staff work their behind off um, after hours, before hours, to put this event on. And then you just have some terrible human beings that want to hide behind a keyboard and, and make comments. Um, some comments about council members' wives. And it's just, it's a shame. And, but I guess that's the price you pay to look down the street in October and see pumpkins from the tree or the lights on the bridge or the lights on the water tower. So, you know, let's um, let's keep looking to the sky because you know if 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 it means we have to take a little criticism to have a fantastic town, then um, we'll just we'll just all blame uh, Justin. Um, <laughs> and then also, um, Miss Williams, can we get? <clears throat> that's why I set you up. Can we? Get, <clears throat> excuse me. Can we get an update on our treasury portfolio and sort of how that's looking and what that's, I mean, I know no one else up here cares except for me, but I just sort of like to see how they've got things placed and I'd be interested in that. And, and do you want to do this now or do you want to wait until we get done? Uh, well, let's just do this and I'll go right back to you. Okay. Just hear from yeah. uh, Mr. Jordan and, and I'll say a couple of words. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, thanks. Go um, I, think, I think I've taken enough blame for uh, for the traffic this uh, past Thursday night, but you know I'll take that blame um, all day long. When you look at the, the crowd that was downtown, um, the kids, um, you know the streets were packed, and and it was it was an incredible event. Um, it gets bigger and better every year. Um, yeah, I think Adam, you said it earlier. It's, you know, some growing pains for us. And, you know, those are some, some good growing pains to have, to be honest. Um, but, and, you know, and, and you said it again as well, uh, Mr. Goldfinch, you know, it's, it's not easy to sit here. Um, it's not easy to, to sit here and take darts. Um, it's not easy to sit here and take darts for your family. Um, my family didn't sign up for this, I did. And, uh, you know, if you want to throw darts, throw them at me. Um, but leave my family out of it. Um, but with that said, uh, kudos to staff for all that they did. You know, these guys and girls work around the clock. Um, <coughs> you know, and, and, and it showed. Um, I, my, my wife and I and some friends went to dinner uh, Friday night and then ended up making the, the, the long walk uh, through, through Conway. And uh, it is absolutely beautiful. And, and I don't know how you can complain about that. Um, if you can complain about that, then you've got some serious issues yourself that you need to, to work out. Um, and for our tree lighting uh, that's coming up Thursday night, um, I, I think that is an incredible, incredible thing. Um, so thank you to all involved with that. Um, you know, working in healthcare, working with uh, you know, a lot of disabled kids and, and, and adults and, and their self. Um, that's, that is an opportunity to show that Conway is inclusive for, for all. 
Um, and so thank you for that. And we will not see you all until next year. So um, Merry Christmas to all um, and to Mr. Benton. Um, best, best of luck to you and, and your family as well, man. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't have much to add. I, I just want to um, tell Mr. Autry Benton that I'm glad to know him. I couldn't have gotten to know you as well except to be on this council with you. Um, thank you for your contributions, and I do wish you and your family well for your future. You're a young man who knows where this is going, but we'll be watching. Um, people have spoken about um, critiques by other people. I get some, but I get way more credit than I could ever deserve. People recognize what's different here. William Goldfinch has a real good way of, of saying things. Uh, we didn't take any risks and we didn't spend any money and we were stuck in place. And we stayed stuck in place decade after decade. And as more funds became available and we met this man who never knew there was a box, um, we got catapulted into a place where people choose to come just to come to Conway. It's not because they're in Myrtle Beach and they'll just go check us out. They come here from other states because we've become our own destination. Uh, that tree lighting event was, um, I mean, I can't contain my emotions. Um, I walked down for the first time to the end of the river walk afterwards. I thought I was in some fantasy land. I mean, it is incredible, and if anybody listening has not taken their family down there at dusk or later, then you're missing a treat, and it belongs to you. Go down there and enjoy it, see it. Um, all of downtown Conway, beyond downtown Conway, uh, is changing, and it will continue to change. And that's, you know, except for death and taxes, that's the one thing you can count on, is change. And hopefully, the leaders in every arena are doing the best they can with managing that change, with making sure it makes sense, that it's sustainable, that we're not digging ourselves into some hole. Uh, we do the best we can. Uh, people like me pray about it. Uh, and uh, I think there's, that some really good things have happened in this city over the last several years. And um, you know, I'm, I'm bold enough to say that in large part, it has to do with our hiring Adam Emmerich. He's a game changer. And I'm proud to know him, and I'm proud to work with him. So let's give him a hand. I'm not going anywhere, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. No. Well, and and I'll, I'll give Adam that at the top, but Adam couldn't have done all this by himself. Uh, I've described it. Somebody asked me today, who should they call uh, to thank for the way Conway looks? And um, I, I gave his name, of course, but he couldn't, he's the brain, he's the creative, but so many employees work hard, work long hours uh, without frowning. And other staff go out there to support them while they're doing it. Just the other day, I saw Lynn and Becky um, with, I don't know what they were serving, but they serve people all the time, uh, some kind of biscuits and coffee, I don't know. When they were doing the stuff at the town green, always helping each other, sharing the load. Anyway, I'm rambling. So the latitude that you afford staff to be able to do crazy stuff is why. So thank you. Mary, real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, I forgot two, two quick things. Um, for starters, the, the young lady that did these Christmas cards, her reaction was, was incredible. I, I, uh, William, I was trying to get William's attention so you could see it, but you couldn't, uh, so hopefully you can go back and, uh, oh, yeah. and, and, and see that. But so her, she couldn't her believe reaction, it. She had no, no idea she didn't what know. she was here. And I didn't um, know she didn't so, know. So her reaction was great. And, uh, and for future reference, if any of you ever get a text from Adam that says, are you available? Uh, <laughs> on a short notice. Um, you, you might want to think about it. But with that said, I did have the opportunity um, on a three minute heads up notice to present our um, Employee of the Year Awards this week to our uh, to staff. And uh, so, so Adam, yes, last minute, uh, but it was a joy. Um, 
and, and those, those are very well deserved. So, yeah, sorry. Had to, had Not at all. I understand. I understand. So, <laughs> so um, I promised Mr. Goldfinch that once we uh, each had a chance to speak under um, council input that I would give him a chance to bring us up to date on a committee that he's working on. Yes, as, as you, thank you, Mayor. As you all know, um, I am, I serve on the Ride 4 Committee. There are six of us uh, uh, around the county that are formulating a list of projects. Um, that's been completed, and um, <clears throat> and now our, our our focus will shift to prioritizing um, those those projects. Um, before you um, is a list of projects that will. Uh, not all of these are necessarily in the city limits, but they'll have impact. And what I need from you all is a consensus. We're, we're not voting, um, but a consensus of the priorities and. Um, I don't think anyone, and Mr. Benton spoke to this earlier, will, will disagree that a new Conway River crossing is certainly um, at the top of the list. Um, that is also, fortunately, that there seems to be consensus amongst the six of us across all, all of Ory County that, you know, that is a top priority. Myrtle Beach recognizes that, you know, I think it's 84 or 86 percent of their tourist population comes through Conway on 501, and they, they know that we got to we got to do something. Furthermore, we've got to start now, because if it passes the referendum next November, okay, so 11 months from now, we're still 18 years out from cutting the ribbon, okay. Um, and so, what one thing, and and you'll hear more about this is, we're not looking at, and I want to be very clear, we're not looking at doing a new or additional tax but we're looking at something called a 25-year transportation tax that will merely extend the already penny tax <clears throat> for the next two and a half decades what that will enable us to do are some of these larger regional uh, projects like the conway river crossing like the cell project except we're not calling it cell anymore we're calling it the highway 22 extension that would extend from uh, almost near Ainer all the way to the south end, okay? We can't do that on a ride project. A ride project, seven years, seven, eight years. You cannot raise enough revenue to get all of that done. And so if we commit to a longer period of time and the voters are on board with it, then what we get to do is we get to tackle all of this. We get to tackle Interstate 73. We get to tackle the projects that are in front of you. And I'll just, for the record, I'll read, read them out. Um, New Conway River Crossing environmental study, 60 million. New Conway River Crossing construction, 800 million. Uh, cultural road widening with me, uh, median and multipurpose path, 88 million. East Cox Ferry Road widening to four lanes with turn lanes at intersections from Highway 90 to 544. So we would essentially four lane East Cox Ferry Road to um, from Highway 90 all the way to 544 and we would improve and, and make safe that dangerous uh, intersection there at East Cox Ferry Road and, 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 and 501. Then we would widen Highway 90, uh, four lanes um, all the way up to International Drive. What I did not put on here is we're going to do that all, the whole way up Highway 90. Um, that just has less of an impact on Conway, so I didn't mention it. And then also, in front, lastly, Highway 501, construct a new off-ramp to 3rd Avenue and Marina Drive. And, you know, this news that we got today, Adam, about Santee Cooper, I mean, that came in with impeccable timing because it just further, um, but anyway, it's going to take time to do all of this. And all of these projects are not created equally, obviously, and are going to take longer than others. And so what I need this group to do is to, is we just need a consensus as to prioritizing these projects that you have before you. What is the verb for consensus? To consent? <coughs> I think a general agreement to, that we're just all on I mean, the same page. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm joking. Um, so I don't mind saying that, um, in my mind, there's, there's no question but that uh, a new river crossing um, from Conway across the Waccamaw should be number one. Number one. Yep. Yep. I'm just one person. I and certainly agree with the mayor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that one's an easy one. 
So it, does your question go further? Is it are these yeah, in so some these order? other? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Yes, ma'am. So you know, we can considered. package the first two as one. That goes without saying. Sure. Um, I'll add two before I forget. I, um, I had someone, a gentleman, a good friend of mine, say, you know, William, you never vote for a tax increase. And I said, okay. But I said, do you realize that 58% of the people paying this penny tax don't live here? They're tourists. Think about that. Put that in perspective. So would you rather raise your property taxes to subsidize these projects that, we, that have to happen? Or would you rather folks coming down from Virginia or wherever they're coming from on vacation to subsidize it? I mean, it's a no-brainer. So share that with people, too, because I think that's an important feature of, of, of this. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, so we're now done with council input, and we are about to go into executive session. Uh, after what <laughs> is written as a break, like two minutes, please. Uh, during which time we will discuss a proposed development agreement known as the Warden Station Tract, pursuant to South Carolina Code Section 3470A2. Uh, we will reconvene from executive session and uh, we will reconvene if there's any action to be taken once we have met. Is there a motion to go into executive session, Mr. Jordan? So moved. Ms. Helms. All in favor? It's unanimous. <laughs> Thank you so much.
You okay? Yeah. Don't don't get any sick on. Right. Well, and no, neither do you want to get sick on. It's Christmas. So, are we ready? Jeff, are we back? Yes. So, um, we're now back in regular session, and I'm going to move that uh, the city of Conway enter that the city of Conway approve the. Um, What's it called? First reading of the, P, the uh, plan development agreement. Thank you so much. With these particulars that have been <coughs> determined, that within 36 months of the first land disturbance, that the part will be conveyed to the city of Conway after it has, in fact, uh, placed the improvements on the park. Uh, the developer will provide a letter of credit to guarantee park, whoa, updates, improvements at final plant. I'm proud we've never gotten that. Whoa, I saw something that looked like a P. Maybe I should say, am I on, I'm being recorded, aren't I? <clears throat> a letter of credit to guarantee park improvements uh, at final plant approval and that enhancement fees will be paid to the city by the developer in the amount of $5,750 per uh, residential unit. Is there a second? I'll second that, Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Jordan. We have a properly seconded motion. Is there any further discussion? There being none, we'll call a vote. All in favor, please indicate your favor by showing your hand. And that motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much. Now we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Yes, sir. May I make a motion that we adjourn? Ms. Helms. All in favor, please indicate so by showing your hand. Motion is approved unanimously, and we are now adjourned. Thank you so much for your.